entrance at all? How worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and divinity and wisdom and strength and honor. To him belong glory and power forever and ever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Now, my God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant we pray that the whole of creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise to our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven when he reached the ancient one and was presented before him the one like a son of man received dominion glory and kingship all peoples nation and languages serve him his dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away his kingship shall not be destroyed the word of the lord Thanks. Thanks be to God. The Lord is King, He is robed in majesty. The Lord is King, He is robed in majesty. The Lord is King, in splendor robed, robed is the Lord and girt about with strength. The Lord is King, and is robed in majesty. And He was made, and He has made the world firm, not to be moved. Your throne stands firm from of old, from Everlasting you are, O Lord. The Lord is King, he is robed in majesty. Your decrees are worthy of trust indeed. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, for length of days. The Lord is King, he is robed in majesty. A reading from the book of Revelation. Jesus Christ is the faithful witness the firstborn of the dead and ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, who has made us into a kingdom, priest for his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. 
Behold, he is coming amid the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. All the peoples of the earth will lament him. Yes, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is and was and who is to come, the Almighty, the Word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Pilate said to Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening. Good evening. As we conclude our Eucharistic mission on this, the year of the Eucharist in the parish, I would first like to publicly thank my brother priest who prayed, reflected, studied, and then came on the various nights to share with us some aspect of the Eucharist that they had come to appreciate through their uh, own prayer life and growth. I thank them deeply and sincerely. I would also like to thank those who assisted in making uh, this dream a reality. Uh, the parish staff of St. Bridget and St. Thomas who did such a tremendous job and thank those of you from our parishes, those who are guests, who have come throughout the week, even if you came from one night, to be here to listen and grow your own spiritual life. And lastly, for those who, through no fault of their own, were unable to attend, uh, but who at least took the time to watch the Mass, the tonight or to watch one of the holy hours and talks during the week. Thank you for taking that time and doing that as well. well. Tonight I conclude and I want to conclude by looking at the Eucharist as sacrifice and meal. Now to understand the Eucharist as sacrifice and meal we need to do a deep dive into sacred scripture. And to do that, let us begin first with the Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of Luke chapter 11. In verse 1, as Jesus was praying in a certain place, Luke records that when he was finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. 
For to understand the Eucharist as a sacrifice, as a meal, to understand the aspect of the Eucharist that we as Catholics hold as the source and summit of our religious life, we have to understand prayer. For prayer is the key. Now, to understand this prayer, we have to define what prayer is. So if we were to say, what is prayer? How do you define it? Most would say it is when I speak to God. It is when I listen to God. <laughs> and we can look at prayer from the various types or forms of prayer that people are familiar with. Whether they be praise, contemplation, whether that be petition, whether that be thanksgiving, etc. All these different understandings, these types of prayers, these forms of prayers, help us to understand prayer. But might I posit something to you tonight? Prayer is revelation. It is a revelation of God expressed through the divine communication. To think about it this way. God in his spoken word, which according to St. John in the gospel, the prologue, that word spoken from all eternity takes flesh and becomes the son, the incarnate son, Jesus. And through that revelation of the father, through the son, the Son and the Father open up prayer to us. And they do this for a very important reason. We have to go back to the beginning in the book of Genesis. Adam and Eve, when they disobeyed God and fell, we know the outcome of the story. They were uh, rewarded for their disobedience with certain punishments. But there is one punishment that is not specifically mentioned, but it's all the more active in our lives. And that unnamed punishment is the clouding or the darkening of our intellect due to sin. In essence, that's when you and I struggle. We struggle to see the divine will of God in our lives or in the lives of others. That's when we find yourself asking God, God, why? Why did you allow this catastrophe to happen? Why do you allow this grave sin, this offense against life to continue? Why, God, where are you? Is this where you're leading me? Is this choice that I'm faced? I don't know, help me. That darkening of the intellect or clouding of the intellect due to sin is something that plagues us every day. Trying to assume we're doing the right in the will of God in our lives. And God, through that moment of Adam and Eve, in his divine plan, he knows that we are natural beings. We can never attain that supernatural level of communication that God, the Trinity, shares amongst each other without God stooping down to help us. It left to our own natural intellect, we will always grope and struggle in the darkness of sin. We need supernatural grace. We need that supernatural light of God to illuminate us so that we can know where he is leading us. So God chooses in that divine plan to slowly reveal himself to us. And we can see from his interactions in the Old Testament how God slowly reveals himself to the people. I am God. I am a jealous God. It's not so much that he is jealous as we understand the word jealousy, but God wants to 
lead his people away from those things that infect their spiritual lives. And that is the worship and adoration given to false gods. Remember, the Jewish people, our Jewish ancestors in the beginning, we could go to the Old Testament and see how they are affected by the nations around them. That's why, if you remember, when we discussed Moses, as they have just crossed the Red Sea, Moses up upon the mountain, speaking to God for the people, interceding for the people, while they are led by Aaron down at the shore, offering praise and worship to the golden calf, a false god, something associated with the gods of Egypt. God, throughout the Old Testament, is always trying to lead his people away from that. That's why we have often read and heard people say, oh, God was brutal in the Old Testament. He would tell them, go in, wipe everybody out. Go into a city, kill everything that moves. People would say, why? Why was God so brutal? God does not want anything to infect the spiritual lives of his children. He doesn't want anything to be there that can provoke a temptation to worship a false god. In essence, even us in our own day, we wage war, our spirit and our flesh, to try to purge ourselves from those false gods that lead us astray. We're always doing that, trying to move away from anything that doesn't lead us closer to God. In the Gospel of John, John says three very beautiful words. He says, God is love. And it is the love of God for humanity that motivates God to always look for us, to always seek us out, to always guide us. And he does that par excellence in this revelation of himself through his spoken word, his incarnate son, Jesus. Throughout the earthly life of Jesus, what he does, what he says, what he teaches, what he does not do, what he does not say, what he does not teach, all communicate to us some aspect, some reality of the Trinity, the love of Father, Son, and Spirit for you and I, fallen humanity. One part of that revelation the part that affects us tonight is as God is leading his people to that deeper understanding, building up to where we are today, he starts by allowing them to praise him by offering sacrifices. They start as they are upon that wilderness wandering, offering sacrifices to God, remembering that great moment of Passover when that Paschal lamb was offered to God. And as they sat down for that communal meal and ate that meal, as the angel of the Lord passed over to strike down the firstborn of Egypt, man and beast alike. And throughout their wandering in the Old Testament, in that wilderness, they have a certain time when they take a lamb and they place upon the lamb the sins of the community, then expel that lamb out into the wilderness. They're always coming to understand God. And we reach a beautiful moment in the history of Israel when David says, Who am I? I dwell in a house of cedar when my Lord dwells in a tent. If you remember, God reveals to David through the prophet that it is his son, Solomon, who shall be the one to construct a temple, a temple that will offer sacrifices to God for the Jewish people. Sacrifices, animal and cereal offerings offered for those things that we pray about, praise, thanksgiving, reconciliation, 
all these things. Sacrifice would be offered night, day, throughout every day. Something is going on praising God by the great Jewish peoples. Those sacrifices only come to an end at certain points, either through the destruction of the temple uh, by the Babylonians when they expelled everyone or as many as they could. We see it finally end completely when Rome uh, conquered Jerusalem around 70 AD. But by this time, 70 AD, our young fledgling Christian community, of which we have learned the last few nights about, when our young Christian community has slowly, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, separated itself gradually from their Jewish roots. But yet that separation is never really truly complete. Even to our day, one can go into a synagogue and see things that you'll go, aha, that's where we get it as Catholics. That's where that comes from, even in a synagogue to this day. <coughs> so when our early ancestors, those early first Christians, were in the process of moving and separating themselves from their Jewish roots, when those early Christians were inviting within their, their group the Gentile brothers and sisters, Whenever it came to their worship of God, of which we heard about from St. Justin the Apologist the other night, they would still continue with their roots of Jewish sacrifice. They would still, as they continued to grow, offer sacrifices to God, remembering, remembering Jesus as it develops in its theology, its history, Jesus becomes that paschal sacrifice. That's why in the Gospel of John, if you remember, John puts the sacrifice of Jesus beginning at the same time the sacrifice of the paschal lambs was happening for the temple worship. There's a direct correlation to all of that. So these early Christians, as they started, and we heard the other night about the Edict of Milan, in the 300s, as they're starting to develop churches, as they're starting to make formal worship, it, they continue with that sacrificial mentality, that it is the sacrifice which is fundamental. And why is it fundamental? Because Jesus said, do this in memory of me. Do what? Offer the bread and wine at table. Do this in memory of me. And then after the sacrifice, share amongst yourselves a communal meal. We sometimes think the emphasis is on the Passover meal. No, no, no. It never has been. It never has been. For if you think about it, if it was focused solely on the Passover meal, then more of the Passover meal would be brought into the Christian liturgy as it forms. But it's not. The most important part was the words of Jesus as he took bread. This is my body. As he took the chalice of wine and water mixed. This is the cup of my blood. That sacrifice is the most important thing. It's what makes the meal. Now, the early Christian community, as she develops her theology, starts to understand more the importance of that sacrifice. It starts to see the sacrifice of Jesus upon the cross as what it truly is, a sacrifice, with Christ being the he, the high priest, who offers the sacrifice. He is also himself the sacrifice that is offered, and the sacrifice that is offered is his body upon the altar. The altar of wood, the cross on Mount, on Mount Calvary. This has to develop in time because for the first Jewish Christians, they would not have understood that because it did not have in their mind the nature of sacrifice. It was done outside the walls of 
Jerusalem. It was not, they didn't see Jesus as a priest at that time offering himself. Now that has to slowly and progressively be revealed to the early fathers of the church by the Holy Spirit. He has to be the one to guide in the formation of Christ church, Christ body as it develops. And that's why we see the original meal transformed more into a more ritualized sacrifice. That's why when you see in the beginning, Jesus, when he takes the bread, it breaks it, he passes out and they receive it each in their hand. We see people saying, yes, that's where we get communion in the hand. But yet as the theology and the spirituality develops, you see a move in that sacrifice. If this is a sacrifice, and if our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is present in every means, every accident of bread, then what happens when that bread starts to crumble and hits the floor? You start to see them develop an understanding that this sacrifice is so special, so sacred, that we must receive it in our mouth to prevent it from falling. And then they say even further, but we, we want to make sure that even in the mouth, we don't want it to fall because it's God. It's an important sacred sacrifice. So they develop a pattern. And you see churches to this day still use the pattern under the mouth or under the hand of the recipient of the Eucharist. Think of it this way. The sacrifice, the Eucharist is so sacred that they did not want it to fall and hit the ground or to fall tonight and land upon a green carpet. Although it is vacuumed as much as we can, they wanted it to fall and land upon precious metal. That's how sacred the Eucharist in the minds of the early Christians. And as it develops through in its theology, that's how sacred it is. Our understanding of the meal develops out of this sacredness. For one cannot have the Eucharist, sacrifice, and meal without the other. You need both. That's why when we come to our churches, even to this day, we remember the sacrifice, the unbloodied sacrifice of Christ upon the cross, and we celebrate together as one family a meal. For that's what they would have done in the temple. A sacrifice would have been offered and what was taken from the animal or the cereal offering part of it was the best part of it was burnt in the fire for that is given to God and can never be once it's destroyed by the fire can never be taken back part of it is given to the priest so that they may have sustenance part of it was taken home by the person who offered taken home and shared with their family and friends. For the Eucharist, as we know it, brings us together. For we cannot have communion without union. That is why tonight we take this time to offer thanksgiving for the thanksgiving, the Eucharist. That true gift from God which invites us into the perfect prayer of Son to the Father. The perfect prayer in that it is the Son who offers himself to the Father perpetually under the appearances of bread and wine. Father, I offer you my body, my blood, for the sake of fallen humanity in reparation for their sins and the sins of all the world. That is the Eucharist, a thanksgiving for so great a gift to all of us. May Almighty God be with you. May he bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>
coming together as one family in faith, we offer to God our prayers and our needs. For all who have vowed themselves to God, that with his help they may faithfully keep to their resolve, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For peace among nations, that delivered from all turmoil, the peoples may serve God in freedom of heart, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the elderly who suffer from isolation or sickness, that they may be strengthened by our love of them as brothers and sisters, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, for all of us gathered in this sacred place by faith and devotion and by love and reverence for God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for ourselves gathered here, that as God does not cease to sustain us with the things of this life, we may know how to use them in such a way that we may hold even now to the things that endure forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions, spoken and unspoken, joined through the intercession of St. Thomas the Apostle, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And for Rachel Fontenot, her husband Brian, and for their family, for whom this Mass is being offered this night, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Offering all our prayers to the Father, let us conclude with the prayer of praise in honor of the Blessed Trinity. Glory, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. Will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, you, God, forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. Will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on us, on all nations, the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the all of gladness, as eternal priest and King of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal kingdom and universal kingdom a kingdom of truth and life a kingdom of holiness and grace a kingdom of justice love and peace and so with angels and archangels with thrones dominions and with all the hosts and powers of heaven we sing the hymn of your glory is without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth, the holy your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is you who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all those holding to the truth and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. And blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all of your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. 
be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly confidence and to accept them. As once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victory. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, life, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Amid us we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we are not in the temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. So we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Live not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. 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 Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word and not so shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word and not so shall be healed.
Let us pray. Have received the food of immortality. We ask, O Lord, that glorifying and obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom. He lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Amen. Please be seated. Just two things. The first, you will notice in your bulletin, you will have this bright pink sheet of paper. On that is the new St. Thomas and St. Bridget Mass schedule. That schedule, which will move the, Saturday, the Sunday 4 p.m. service to Saturday at 4 p.m., begins effective the weekend of December the 4th, the first weekend of December. So thank you for your kindness as we have made this uh, change to our schedule. And secondly, as a matter of trivia, I don't know. Some of you may have got the significance, others may not. There was a reason why I wore this particular vestment and said the mass particularly at Orientum or facing the Orient, the East tonight for you. On the back is the picture of our Lord crucified. What I wanted you to see tonight, if you notice, was this. To see a man with a cross on his back offering a sacrifice for you. It's not about our priest. It's about the man with the cross on his back offering a sacrifice for you. Now, mighty God be with you again. Let us pray our prayer to St. Michael. Holy Michael, the Archangel, forgive us in hell. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. And may God give you the kingdom of prayer. And be the oppressors of the heavenly host. God of the divine power, thrust into the hell. Shame in all the other evil spirits, the one in the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Divine praise, protection against storms, hurricanes, and other disasters. Blessed be God. Let us be your holy and happy conception. Let us be your holy.